I want to welcome everyone back. I want to tell our fans that we're really excited for the upcoming season. Uh, and we look, look forward to our fan support and everyone in the city, their support and getting behind us. Thank you. Questions? Sarah, will you have a full roster to begin camp tomorrow? No. Um, Tyler Boucher isn't ready yet, but he'll be ready in a short period of time. Josh Norris tweaked something last week in the captain's gates. Uh, he'll be wearing a yellow jersey. He'll be taking full part in practice. Uh, Josh doesn't want to wear a yellow jersey. DJ doesn't want Josh wearing a yellow jersey. But we've made the decision that he'll wear one for a very short period of time. Uh, if the regular season was starting in a few days, he'd be playing. We're just being extra cautious here uh, with his ongoing rehab. Shane Pinto update? Uh, keep on speaking with his agent or agents almost on a daily basis, even today. And uh, we hope to have him in camp as soon as we can. Is the Norris tweak shoulder related? Is that why there's an update? Uh, yes and no. And I'm not a really a doctor. Uh, so I can't. <laughs> uh, but it, it's nothing serious. Like if we were playing two days from now, he'd play. I, I think it's just we're just being extra cautious uh, to make sure that we have him at 100%. He's a big part of our team, and we know he's going to be a big part of us having success. So it, it is, but it's not. Uh, it got a bit complicated when I found out a bit more about it uh, yesterday. Before he tweaked it, was he, I'm sorry, that, and how did he look on the ice? And did he Back to yeah, all great. Taking contact, everything good, and it's kind of like related, but not really related. So it, he he was taking contact and everything. It, we're just being extra cautious here for first few days of camp. We just felt, you know, let's make sure that he gets in all the DJ's practices. He gets ready, gets acclimatized to everything. That's why we're doing this. It, it's very very minor. Let's put it at that. But I I think we should be upfront and tell you everything. If we're on the topic, uh, DJ. What, what are you expecting out of him based on what you saw two years ago this year? Josh? Um, I, obviously, anyone that takes that amount of time off is going to take you a little bit to get going. That's why um, the exhibition schedule is big for him, is to get a lot of reps in. Um, you know, There's a few things we're going to tweak with our systems. Uh, but ultimately, it's about him feeling comfortable. And uh, the more he plays, the more minutes he gets, uh, the more he's going to feel at ease in his own mind, in his own skin, his ability. And then once he gets that, his ability will take over. Can I ask you both how you feel about this roster going into camp and the changes that have been made? I'm, uh, I'm excited. I think we've addressed a lot of things. If, we, if you start by our goaltending, we feel we're going to have really good competition, a really strong tandem. Uh, I personally went and saw Corpus Allo play in the playoffs. Uh, our defense, what we did last year when we acquired Jacob Chikrin, how Jake Sanderson has matured. Uh, I think how Branny stepped up when we had injuries. I think our defense looks real good. Up front, I know we lost a big piece in Alex Dabrinkat, but I've, I'm more looking forward to adding Kubelik as part of that trade. He only had seven goals less than Alex. And on top of that, you add a guy of Ter Tarasenko stature. I, I think it really bodes well. I, I think it, it's, it's good for DJ. He's got a lot of things he can play with. Uh, but I, I think our, you know, as long as we can remain healthy and knock on wood, uh, I really like our team. Biggest challenge, DJ, finding out where in the next few weeks, figuring out where everybody fits. Is that kind of your? Yeah, for sure. And and where they fit at the start is going to change from where they are maybe in six weeks to the middle of the year to the end of the year. So, I mean, it's not like you you have a fit on the line and that's it and that's the way we're going to go about this. You know, uh, Tarasenko is going to get a chance to play the left side. He's going to play the right side with with Timmy as well. So throughout camp, throughout exhibition games, everyone's going to get a chance a little bit with everyone. Um, and then we'll try and go with, you know, at the end, we're going to nail down what we think is the best roster to start the year, lines-wise, pairs-wise, and what have you. But as we know, it's going to change as the year goes on. Did you, can you talk a bit about the style of play you'd like your team to have this year? Because I think you made some comments about maybe tweaking that a little bit you know, over the summer you were talking about that? Well, I think we have more depth when it comes to offensive players. We need to have the puck more. And if we have the puck, you're not defending. So I think at the end of the day, um, you know, how much can we have the puck this year? 
And then when you have it, how hard are we going to play to get it back? We want pressure. We want to put pressure on you. We think we can skate. Uh, I think always our team is going to be physical, um, you know, finishing checks and those things that go with it. But if we have the puck, we don't have to defend as much. And I and I just like our team. Uh, as a, overall, I think we've got some really good pros. I think we've got some guys that are coming into the middle parts of their career now that have lots to prove. And uh, I think you're going to see a more mature team. DJ, where do you envision the highest level of competition on this roster being? Well, I think clearly it's in the top nine. Um, you know, I, uh, I think you've got players that could be playing on, you know, what you would call a third line, um, if that's what you want to call it, um, that are, could be a first line player in a week. Um, so the best part about having that issue is that if you're not going, someone else has got to take your spot. And that's part for me of being a team that has a chance to win every night is that if you're not going, someone else is going to go. And I think over the um, span, uh, you know, if you want to call it the rebuild or, or whatever it was, um, the young guys playing all the time is that, you know, there wasn't a ton of guys to take their spots, you know, and, and that's a good thing because they got to play and they got the reps, but they, they want to win as much as anyone. I mean, uh, you know, ourselves as a coach and as a manager and, and the city, we all want to win. And uh, if they're not going, the next guy up mentality is going to be an absolutely, uh, you know, something this year. Pierre, um, a couple questions. How, how creative do you have to get to get Shane Pinto signed? And is there a corresponding move that, that has to happen here? I think that's part of the job of being a general manager. I think in the salary cap era, uh, you have to get creative. Other teams have done it. We see ourselves being able to do it. Uh, it's more agreeing to a contract more than anything. And after that, I think things will play itself out. Uh, and, and, and yeah, my other question would be, and maybe e each of you can answer this. You got a brand new owner coming in, in Michael Landlauer. And I'm wondering, do you feel like right now that you guys are kind of auditioning, so to speak, for, uh, for your job with the new owner coming in? Not for me. Uh, I think both of us, we know what the plan has been from the get-go when we started this rebuild. Uh, I, you know, for, as far as DJ, and Mike told me that I was the one that decided the coach's faith, and I have as much faith in DJ as I've had. Our, originally, our plan was to rebuild, was to develop the young players. He's done that. He's developed in, into what I think they all can be, He's, whether it's Tim Stuchel, Jake Sanderson, whomever uh, on this team. I think DJ's done a great job of doing that. Um, and now, you know, it's never been... Last year was the first time I told him we had to bring our game to where we played meaningful games uh, at the trade deadline. He delivered on that. Um, I think our relationship is as good as it's ever been. I think Michael knows that. I've, you know, I don't think DJ's had too much fraternizing with Michael. I, I've, you know, through this uh, ownership process, I, I've had quite a few dealings with Michael. Um, you know, I have to go through obviously the board. Then we go through Michael, and it because we can only consult, can't make really decisions until Friday, or I, we believe it'll be Friday or by the end of the week, as he said yesterday. So I don't think at all we're auditioning. I think there's been a plan in place, and hopefully the team continues on getting better. And you know, we'll see what the future brings. But I can tell you, for us and for me, my relationship with DJ is as good as it's been. If I get sidebar to that, I think. We all have summers, and the best thing this summer that I personally was part of was what DJ and Bob Bugner did for Bob Jones. Um, whether we, he had a ALS game, and it shows you what kind of people both DJ and Bob Bugner are. Uh, what they did that game in Windsor with almost the arena packed, with all the players that came back, I think it says a lot about him as a human being, and same thing with Bobby. And, you know, I hope he doesn't mind. We, we played golf. We had like 40 guys playing golf the day before, and it was probably the most fun, most fun round of golf that I had. The teasing after the round of golf, he introduced me to a guy that had the social insurance <laughs> number that was number seven, he told me. <laughs> um, so it, it, was, it was, you know, it, it's a side that we don't see of DJ, and not that I'm trying to brag him up, but he, on top of being a good coach, he's a very good human being, and he'll, he cares about his friends and people close to him. And I think for me, I think when you're lucky enough to get an opportunity to coach in a city this long and, and lucky enough to coach a team that has a chance to win every night, I think the pressure remains the same, whether you have a five-year deal, a two-month deal. Uh, as we see in sport, uh, when you're expected to, to, to be better, you have to be better. And my job as a coach 
is to make sure that we're better. And that falls on me, and I'm up for the challenge. Um, I think everyone knows how much I, I love the city and I love these players, and I think we're ready uh, to push to be better. But in saying that, um, you know, how many teams on our side th are thinking the same thing today? So all we can do is worry about ourselves. I'm not going to worry about my job. I'm going to do it to the absolute best of my ability, and I have confidence that uh, with me and my staff and the management and, and the new leadership in ownership um, that we're going to be a really good team. Can I just ask for Thomas Schwab? He, he yeah, I know Thomas is fine. Okay. He 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 wanted to let Brady win. That's why he didn't play. No, he, it's it's all good. Uh, conditions were probably weren't favorable for him to play. He's been skating. He's 100. percent He's taking part in everything. He's good to go, and he is good to go. Um, I wonder what. Oh, I just yeah, I was going to ask just what you enjoy the most about now being in the situation, as you say, like the privilege of being in a market that cares, and now you've got a roster that feels like. The next step is awaiting, like the challenge of all that. Um, what do you enjoy most about it? Well, lucky enough to, to be the uh, you know the evolution of this group is you know so many turnover and so many things, um, but we've got a group that cares, and that's that makes it easy as a coach because these guys want it as bad as anyone, and you know we've yet to prove to anyone. And we're not, and I and as you know, I'm not going to be the guy that's going to stand up here and, and talk about what we're going to do. But I know that these guys want to win every night. I know that they want to do the things. Now we've got to prove it, and we've got to do it. And my job is to get that out of them, uh, you know, every single night. I think for me, one of the best nights I've had as a coach in Ottawa is the night that the fans were screaming, "We want playoffs," and I think we felt that around the room. And as as a group, you know, and then you know to come up short, and you know maybe we're supposed to, not supposed to get in or whatever the case may be. But at that point, we knew we maybe had a chance, you know that that, and then to come up short certainly makes you hungrier as a group. We know how hard it is. Um, teams that win the Stanley Cup sometimes miss the playoffs the next year. We know how hard it is to do it. Uh, we're going to do everything in our power. But I know that uh, my group. Uh, down there uh, are going to be ready, and, and, and they're as hungry as anyone to, to try and compete for that. If you look at the schedule, before the Sweden trip, you play a lot of home games, don't have too many long road trips. How important will it be to, to make sure that you start the season with a strong start to make sure that you put yourself in a good position? Though? Well, when you look at our, our record the last couple of years, clearly the starts or it's not even the starts, it's November has been a real issue. Um, you know, and then you look at games 20 through 60, we're one of the, you know, we're one of the better teams. So, you know, when I look at that, is it injuries, is it this, is it that? Um, you know, I know that when the dog days of, of the winter come, our guys are going to push and we're going to scratch and we're going to claw. Um, we've got to be ready. And we and we know, and there's no point, it's the elephant in the room, you know, what, how are you going to play in November? We're going to play good. And... Um, Last year's last year, and these guys are a year older. They know what's expected. One thing we're going to do is turn the page. Whether you win a game or lose the game, I think part of maturity is turning the page and just trying to win the next game. You don't ride the highs too high and the lows too low. I think that's part of maturity. Um, there's no more excuses. We're young, and you know these guys are good players, and we expect to win. Um, if we don't want to win on you know the first day of November, we expect to win the second one, and we're just going to go like that. Jay, when it comes to your goaltending, there's the Boston model with you know clear rotation, or there's you know establish a starter, hope to get 60 games, 30 to 40 wins. Is there a side that you fall on for this season? You know what? It, I don't think there's any clear way to say it before it starts. If one guy's playing great and the other guy's not playing great, it's clear the one guy playing great is going to go and going to go as many times as possible. At the end of the day, we're not saving anything for later. So, um, but if they're both going good, th that model works because you keep everyone fresh, um, injuries less, as we know, the more these guys play, you know, they get hurt today. Um, but we're going to do everything we can to win every game. What's the temptation for you to keep Stutzla, Kachuk, and Giroux together, considering they combined to score with, like, what, more than 100 goals, basically, as a well, they're going to play together, um, you know, in, in the first day of training camp, and they're going to play together in an exhibition game. Then I'm going to switch them around from there. Then Tarasenko is going to play. Um, so don't read a ton into it. But you're right. Analytically, they're one of the best lines in the league there for a stretch. So, you know, whatever gives us the best chance to win. 
And again, it's team first. It doesn't matter where you play. It doesn't matter what line you are. Do your job and do your job to the fullest. And part of having an opportunity to win every night is accepting a role. Um, you know, you look at some of these Stanley Cup teams, um, you know, say over the last 10 years, you've got Hall of Fame guys sometimes that get traded somewhere and they're fourth line guys or they're the sixth defenseman or they sit out. You know, part of winning is sometimes, you know, maybe you don't got her going that week or two weeks. Someone else is taking your spot. So I wouldn't put a ton into it's a set thing and this is what's going to happen. It's going to play itself out, but I know that that group does work well together. You know, I know that they're going to be able to do the drills and the systems and the what have you to lead in, in training camp. So that's why they're going to start together so everyone else can watch them do it. But then as we go through exhibition, we're going to mix it up. Do you, think, do you think one of those best battles will be that five, six, seven, eight defenseman? Like, in, do you expect Clevin to be in the mix for that? Uh, well, I think that's more a question for DJ because, you know, we've always worked where, you know, we talk a lot about the team and the roster, but is he ready? And DJ will be better to answer that than probably me. I think the exhibition games will tell a lot. The hard part about young defensemen is, and I've always been of the belief that it's better to come from the back, you know, and, and, and climb rather than, you know, be handed it and then you're going backwards and then you got to fight your way back. So um, the best part for Clev is that he got games in last year and he got a taste of it. So it's not brand new. Um, he's going to get lots of looks in exhibition. So is, you know, JBD. Um, I know what the other guys can do. So um, ultimately, the best six will play. But in saying that, in today's NHL, the amount of you know people that and players and, and that get injured and the amount of defensemen that you need, everyone's going to get a shot. It's not who you know. To me, it's not who starts the year; it's who finishes. On est bien content d'alignement qu'on va pouvoir refaire à nos partisans, l'alignement qu'on va présenter dès le début de la saison. Ça a commencé l'année passée euh, avec l'acquisition de Jacob Chikrin, solidifier notre, euh, nos défenseurs. Euh, par la suite, l'ajout de Cooper Salo et en travaillant avec Forsberg, on, on, on pense que notre, notre duo de gardien va être excellent cette année. Et euh, surtout à l'avant, l'ajout de Kubalik et l'ajout de Tarasenko euh, donne beaucoup d'opportunités à, à DJ d'avoir trois, quatre bonnes lignes euh, qui peut, qui peut compter, qui peut compétitionner, que ce soit à la maison ou sur la route. Vous avez parlé de, de, de votre avis sur l'entraîneur que vous avez présentement. Vous avez renouvelé un peu votre, votre bon, admiration. Comment non, vous... Il y a toujours une admiration pour DJ. Euh, je suis bien... Euh, Bien content du travail qu'il a fait depuis le début. Au début, l'important, c'était de développer nos jeunes joueurs pour qu'ils deviennent des, des bons joueurs de la Ligue de la Vedette. Certains vont devenir des vedettes dans de la Ligue nationale. Et l'année passée, euh, je dirais que l'emphase a changé plus à commencer à gagner, à apprendre à nos jeunes à gagner. Et puis là, ça va se transmettre à cette année. Non, euh, l'outil des, des statistiques avancées, c'est quelque chose qu euh, que je suis un grand partisan de. Euh, je, par la suite, je vais m'en parler un peu plus en anglais. On a engagé un, un Sean Tierney qui est avec SportLogic, qui va énormément nous aider euh, à avancer dans, je dirais, dans, avec le plus d'informations qu'on peut avoir pour nous aider comme organisation. Um, I would just ask about... Uh, advanced stats analytics and uh, we recently hired Sean Tierney he's someone that I'd phone once in a while uh, when he worked for Sport Logic uh, develop a relationship with him uh, so it was very exciting when we were able to get him on board he just started uh, I know DJ's meeting with him tomorrow and uh, I'm going to meet with him later on the week uh, where we talked in Buffalo both of us about how uh, we can be better as an organization through analytics it's something over the last few years that I've really embraced Uh, but uh, hiring Sean on a full-time basis with our specific needs, I think, will only benefit this organization. Just three more here. It's exactly what I was going to ask you about, just because I know you've been a big believer in analytics and data for a while now, so how do you think that, that resource can help the organization? Well, it can only help. But you've got to be willing to take criticism, and that's the only way you're going to get better. And for me, um, the first thing I said to him is, is come to me with all the stats that the playoff teams – are great at that we're no good at and come in and essentially take a piece of me and my staff and tell us what we're not good at 
And all, our job is to get better. And, you know, we've been doing it throughout this process. We know what we got to improve on. But if you want to be one of the best teams, you got to do what the best teams do. And, and over time, there's certain stats that correlate to winning. And, you know, it, it's, it's not the be-all, end-all, but it certainly matters. And, you know, he's got a presentation for us, um, you know, and, and on a constant basis where we are. Why aren't we at doing this this way? You know, if you want to be good, you got to work at it. And you got, like I said, you got to be willing to take criticism, and, and, and we're good with that. We're, we're, we're here to win, um, and we need to do everything we can. And I think Sean's going to help us do that. Who won, who won the fitness testing? Was there a winner today for number one? There, there was a, uh, a winner. It's Mark Kostelik. Um, yeah, no surprise. Just look at him. Uh, Jake Sanderson, two. Ridley Gregg, three. And if you see Ridley, you know he's put in the work. Uh, just seeing him off ice when he – we got his – I haven't seen everyone's results, but I saw Ridley's results because he played in rookie camp. You can tell that he's put in the work this summer. He's put in a lot of work to get stronger, to get faster. So kudos to him, you know, as a younger player to be able to do that. I got 57. Can we wrap this up? I just wanted to ask yeah. you, who's going to start October 11th against the Hurricanes in net? <laughs> um, I think they're going Freddie Anderson. I'm not sure. 